das Ziegel es geforen handen. Today is born out of yesterday, and there's no birth without pain. Spring, 1901. Sixteen years old, coming to America with five words of English. My name is Zina Gurevich. Impossible language, I'll never learn it. My name is Zina Gurevich. My name is... In the old country, I work like an animal. And even before my children are born, the mark is on them. Animal. Before God, I swear my children will not live as I have lived. Freedom doesn't come like a bird on the wing. Doesn't come down like the summer rain. Freedom, freedom is a hard one thing. You've got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. And every generation got to win it again. Pass it on to your children, mother. Pass it on to your children, brother. You got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. Pass it on to your children. Pass it on. for examination will present themselves with their documents. Find the line matching the letter on your tag. Name? Avrum Bialik. Place of birth? Odessa. How much money you got? No, understand. Money, dinero, how much money? We've got 5,000 to process today, so let's keep these lines moving. You got exactly two minutes to ask him 32 questions and finish health inspection. Keep an eye out for TB. We're getting a lot of it lately. Name? Kasima Sinkevich. Spell it. Please? Skip it. We'll make it Simpson. Please, God, let nothing go wrong. Let them not notice the baby's runny nose. Let them take us into America. Why do you keep asking me what it's going to be like? I told you a thousand times. The streets paved with gold and the houses all marble. Yeah, yeah, even the toilet. I is this a country. Golden America. Learn, study, pay attention. Keep your eyes open, you hear? This is golden America, where millionaires grow on trees like little apples. As I'm standing here, one family, Vanderbilt, has got seven houses on Fifth Avenue. Also, in case they need a little fresh air, a dump on Long Island, and a hole in the wall at Newport. Not to mention a 60-room shack in North Carolina. I read in the paper, just to take care of the grounds, they spend more than the whole Department of Agriculture. So let it be a lesson. Save your money. Official New York City Housing Survey, 1905. We find it difficult to convey conditions in the new immigrant neighborhoods. Darkness and dampness and dirt. Dirt and discomfort and disease. Diphtheria and death. Mulberry Street, 17 of us in four rooms. 
Uncle Antonio from Naples. Aunt Bianca and the kids sleeping in the parlor. If I ever get a boyfriend, where can we go to hold hands? Into the park with the pigeons. My dear, there are certain rules of etiquette one simply does not question. A lady does not show her ankle or raise her voice. If unmarried, a girl must be accompanied by a chaperone. A female relative, a maiden aunt, perhaps, is considered quite satisfactory. Naturally, the best and safest thing to do is to stay at home and help mother about the house. Twelve hours a day. Mama makes 50 cents. I make a dime. Louie makes a nickel. Laying down track for the westbound train, stacking up timber in the state of Maine, digging out coal in the West Virginia hills, hammering steel in the Pittsburgh mills. Immigrants from Austria and Italy, immigrants from Riga on the Baltic Sea, green-eyed Slovaks, blue-eyed Swedes, Irishmen from Limerick, Englishmen from Leeds. Six-day week and a 12-hour day, and it's welcome, boys, to the USA. Dollar a day for a factory hand, and it's welcome, ladies, to the promised land. Immigrants and the sons of immigrants, putting down roots, hanging on. Stubborn as a tree that pushes its way up through the rock. Acrobats and clowns, rascals and lovers, builders and dreamers, leaving their signature on the cities. From Bratislava and Budapest, from Calabria and County Cork they came, dreaming of gold in the streets, and finding no miracles they made their own. A miracle of friendship. The miracle of laughter. The miracle of the generations. The miracle of learning. Listen, you want to hear the presidents? George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson... Professor Genius, what else did you learn? Daniel Webster, quote, Justice is the great interest of man on earth. From your mouth to God's ears. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Golden America, half dream and half nightmare. When I die, don't bear me at all. Hang me up on the spool room wall. Place a bobbin in my hand so I can keep on working in the promised land. I got the blues, I got the blues, I got the winds for cotton mill blues. I got the blues, I got the blues, I got the winds for cotton mill blues. Lordy, Lordy, it's cool and hard. You know and I know, don't have to tell. You work Tom Watson, gotta work like hell. Two million children in the mills and the mines. Six million grown-ups unemployed. Why hire a man for a dollar when you can hire a kid for a dime? I was taught in my youth that it was the height of vulgarity to discuss money. A professor in Chicago came up with a few statistics. An American family cannot adequately survive on less than $900 a year. The average working man earns about 400. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. But what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? For the union makes us strong. Garment workers of New York, keeping alive a tradition going back to the Philadelphia printers who formed a union before Washington was president. Immigrants and the sons of immigrants carrying on the heritage of the Boston carpenters who fought for the 10-hour day while Missouri was still Indian territory. As 
spokesman for the mine owners, I assure you the rights and interests of the laboring man will be protected and cared for not by the labor agitator, but by the Christian men to whom God in his infinite wisdom has given control of the property interests of this country. Freedom doesn't come like a bird on the wing. Doesn't come down like the summer rain. Freedom, freedom is a hard one thing. You've got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. And every generation got to win it again. Pass it on to your children, mother. Pass it on to your children, brother. Came to Chicago, green off the boat, 1910. Got myself a job at a men's clothing shop, Hart, Schaffner, and Marx. Sit at the machine, shaking in your boots, scared of being fired. For talking, sneezing, looking at the foreman, cross-eyed. Busy season, get up before dawn, come home in the dark. The children's faces you don't look on, except when they're sleepy. And in the slack season, Speed up. You can go crazy with the speed up, turning out more and more and more for the same money. Just like this, all of a sudden, the foreman announces they're cutting the piece rate for seeming pants. You got a wife and kids to support. You keep your mouth shut. Lucy, you gonna just sit there and take it? Not me, I'm not taking it, I'm walking out. Sure, it's all right for them, a handful of girls. I got kids to feed. They warned us. Walk out near blacklisted, finished in Chicago. Why doesn't the union do something? The so-called union, my boy, is strictly for the cutters, the aristocrats. They're not interested in greenhorns. What am I doing in here, taking over their work? I ought to be out there with them. What do we do? I don't know what you're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Out. I'm walking out. Do you hear? Do you hear the latest? 3,000 out. Six more shops out. 18,000. 35,000. You hear? 40,000 out. Heard a rumor the union's looking to make a deal under the table and sell us down the river. I'm as mild-mannered girl as can be. Four months of broken heads and empty stomachs. Four months out in the freezing street. Four months standing together, standing solid. I see Charlie out there walking in the line. Up comes a foreman, gives him a punch and yells, go home, troublemaker. So Charlie says, I got my rights. <laughs> rights they gave him. Bullet in the head they gave him. How do you do, sir? My name is Jane Adams. I'm a social worker. I wonder, Mr. Schaffner, how long it's been since you saw with your own eyes the conditions under which these people work for you. So I went down to my factory and I looked. And then I wasn't surprised they were on strike. I was only surprised they waited so long. Schaffner's willing to arbitrate grievances and wage demands. 
What does Hillman say? All we want is to be treated as human beings, not machines. Arbitration is the first step. All right, so they got arbitration. They got a little security at Hart, Schaffner, and Marx. That still leaves the rest of us right back where we started. You think this is the end? Take it from me, this is only the beginning. Something in the wind blowing east from Chicago. A restless murmur running through the shops. Something being born. A beginning. A hope. New York, 1912. Heart of the men's clothing market. 60,000 vest makers and buttonhole makers, pressers and pants makers, cutters and tailors, slapped in jail by the police, bailed out by a tough little labor lawyer named Fiorella LaGuardia. You hear? We got a settlement. A 53-hour week. A big present they gave us. Ice in the winter. Listen, whatever you get, you have to fight for it. If I am wrong, if my information is mistaken, please correct me, which I will appreciate. Thank you. Something in the wind. Something struggling to be born. Baltimore. Strike and sell out. Rochester. Sell out and heartbreak. The union's having a convention, Nashville, Tennessee. Why Nashville? The biggest locals are New York, Chicago, Baltimore. That's the reason. We've got complaints, so they're making it tough for us to get out there. So why Nashville? Why not Alaska? Beg, borrow, somehow scrape together the money for train fare. Nashville! Hold out for Nashville! Locals from New York, Boston, Rochester, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, and Baltimore are delinquent in dues and will not be seated. We were all on strike. We didn't have to eat, so how can we pay dues? Observers in the balcony have no right to speak. Baltimore is still out on strike. Rather in the balcony is out of order. Chicago insists that the brother in the balcony be heard. Delegate from Chicago is out of order. Listen, we just came in from Nashville. Chicago walked out of a convention. Yeah, and, and New York and Baltimore. Boston, Philadelphia, and Cincinnati. 75% of the membership walked out. Really? Does it mean holding their own convention? Yeah, we're setting up our own union. It'll be an outlaw outfit. Won't even be in the air for Bell. Sydney, you're out of your mind, staking your head on a wild gamble. In the month of December in the year 1914, they gathered at Webster Hall and they took the gamble. It was our dream to give security to our members. Security within the framework of liberty, of individual freedom. Lincoln said, a nation cannot exist half slave and half free, neither can a man. We cannot exist free politically, but slaves industrially. Dear brother, we just formed an organizing committee for the amalgamating of clothing workers out here in Milwaukee. Two French buttonhole makers, three Jewish cutters, a Serbian, a Bohemian, two Italian pants makers, a Lithuanian girl, two Poles, a Swede, and a Hungarian. Starting with nothing, with empty pockets and a barrel of hope. Organizing New York and Chicago. Wisconsin and New Jersey, Baltimore and Boston. Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, Montreal, Toronto, Pennsylvania. Dear Brother Hillman, maybe you can come to our assistance. We had a little strike down here in Philadelphia. Our business agent got thrown in jail. I haven't got to buy postage stamps, much less pay the fine. <sighs> worst comes to worst, don't worry. I'll hock my overcoat. Listen, I'm a boss, so don't quote me. Tell you the God's truth, the union is the best thing ever happened in this industry. You've got arbitration, you can come together like human beings, set standards, set rates, in a civilized manner, you know what I mean? Since we went union, we never had a strike. 
January 1st, 1915. Special to McClure's magazine. Midway through the Wilson administration, there are indications that the nation is seeing the beginnings of a new freedom. A weakening of the grip of monopolies by the passage of the Corrupt Practices Act, the Clayton Antitrust Act, workmen's compensation, child labor laws. <laughs> and the sons of immigrants, fishermen from Nantucket, factory hands from the Lower East Side, farm boys from Arkansas. Goodbye, Ma, goodbye, Pa, goodbye, mule with the old hee-haw. I may not know what the war's about, but I bet by gosh I'll soon find out. I'll bring you a hun and a kaiser too, and that's about all one feller can do. I may not know what the war's about, but I bet by gosh I'll soon find out. Oh, my darling, don't you fear, I'll bring you a gun for a souvenir. U.S. Army, dead and missing, 130,500. Wounded, 234,300. U.S. Steel, profits, two billion. In the backwash of war, depression and a rising hysteria. In a single year, 61 murders by lynching. Revolution in Russia touching off panic at home. Victims of the Palmer raids, their houses ransacked without search warrants. 3,000 foreign-born arrested, denied lawyers, held without charges for three months. In Pittsburgh and Gary, Indiana, it was the 12-hour day. Take it or leave it. And you better take it if you know what's good for you. Tell me what is a vigilante man? What is a vigilante man? Does he carry a club and a gun in his hand? Would he beat your brother and sister down? Amalgamated Clothing Workers of America to AF of L. Enclosed, find our contribution, $100,000 for the relief of the steel strikers. We know that this is only the beginning of one of the greatest attacks ever directed against American labor. 1920. In six short years, we built ourselves one of the strongest unions in the country. In New York, a 44-hour week and a working machinery of arbitration. So the employers decide it's time to wreck the union. Come up with a plan to set back the clock, bring back the sweatshop. And when we turned it down... Lockout. They got it all figured. Shut down the machines, lock the doors, get a court injunction against picketing, sit back and starve us out. The judges came back into the courtroom. He's getting ready to read the decision. What happens if they get the injunction? We get thrown in a clink for picking, and that's what happens. Hey, the Supreme Court of the State of New York is now in session. The Honorable Justice Van Sicklin presiding. The court must stand at all times as the representative of capital of the captains of industry. Injunction granted. While the employers may succeed in getting injunctions, they succeed in nothing else. As long as they think they can ship customers injunctions instead of pants, let them go ahead. 
Hang on. Sit tight and hang on. If we crack, it means the end of the Union. The open shop again, the seven-day week and the 12-hour day. Starvation, slums, crime, everything that is rotten, everything that is inhuman. Your organization must ask great sacrifices. We ask you to walk instead of spending a nickel car fare. Your lives depend on it. Your future, the future of your children. We will take care that there is not a single house without bread. We won't give you meat, but your brothers and sisters in Chicago, Rochester and Baltimore won't let you starve. What? With the starting in the sweatshop at the age of 11, somehow I never got time to go to Harvard. So at the age of 47, I'm in lockout college. American history, public speaking, labor history, even art classes. We volunteered to go down there and arrange entertainment. I don't believe the world has such children anywhere as the East Side children. They took our modest program and transformed it with their magic. I sat there thinking, oh, what if the business of society were making children like this instead of profits? And we hung on, hung on for six long months. And we won. We did it. We hung on and we won. A chicken in every pot and a tin lizzie in every garage. Keep cool, wait cool. Cancel the child labor laws. In the White House the other day now, what did Calvin Coolidge say? Bodo dio, bodo do dio do. And Patrick Henry, Henry made a speech, a famous speech, when he told them, liberty or black bottom, crazy words, crazy tune. All that Cal put coon and spoon was bodo dio, bodo do the old dough. For a clothing worker, it's still a seasonal business. Layoffs, unemployment, behind with the rent, payments due on the radio. Go to the bank for a loan, they ask you for security. Listen, if I had security, I wouldn't be there in the first place. My hands are my security. As we come marching, marching, we battle too for men. For they are women's children and we mother them again. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Hearts starve, as well as bodies. Give us bread, but give us roses. The amalgamated pioneering slum clearance. Putting up the first cooperative low-rent houses. Founding a bank where a working man can get a loan on the security of his labor. Setting up the only unemployment insurance program in the nation. And that was also the 20s. Up, 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 boys, the sky's the limit. AT&T, 303. U.S. Steel, 255. 23 skidoo. I love my wife, but who are you kid? U.S. Steel, 313. Hey, what's wrong with the market? U.S. Steel, 300. U.S. Steel, 152. U.S. Steel, 60. Who cares if the sky cares to fall in the sea? Who cares what banks fail in Yonkers? Long as you've got a kiss that conquers. President Hoover assured reporters today that, quote, the fundamental business of the country is on a sound and prosperous basis. The Secretary of the Treasury announced, quote, I can guarantee that there is nothing in the situation to be concerned about. It's a mighty hard road that these poor hands have hold. My poor feet has traveled a hot, dusty road. At the edge of your cities you will see us and then we come with the dust and we're gone with the wind. Fed up with being unemployed, tired of being hungry. 20,000 doughboys went down to Washington to demand the veterans' bonus we had coming to us. Herbert Hoover sicked the army on us. Chase us out of the Capitol. Let me tell you, mister. We ain't taking it no more. There's gonna be some changes made. California came here to nominate a president. California, 44 votes for Roosevelt.
there is a mysterious cycle in human events. To some generations, much is given. Of other generations, much is expected. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. beginning to roll, a running river of social legislation. The CCC and the WPA bringing jobs to 9 million unemployed. Fair labor standards law setting minimum wages and maximum hours. Child labor laws passed again. The TVA bringing light to the dark valleys. The Social Security Act, partially inspired by the amalgamated pattern, providing unemployment and old age insurance. The Wagner Labor Relations Act. Employees shall have the right to bargain collectively through representatives of their own choosing. And until you organize and express yourself, the politicians will vote for bills in Congress that lengthens the working hours, that puts in a starvation curve, and abolishes the prevailing wage. That's what the politicians will do unless you make your wants and your rights known. And you can't do it unless you organize. The workers of this country want representation. They want organization. They want participation. They want protection. They want employment. And they're going to have those things through the leadership and the instrumentality of this new labor movement that you're forging. Instead of a thousand craft unions segregating the workers, the CIO meant one big union for every major industry. Organize the unorganized. Puddlers and furnace men in the steel mills. Deckhands, stokers, oilers aboard the merchant ships. Roustabouts and riggers in the oil fields. Zinc miners, lead miners, copper miners. Rubber workers. Electrical workers. The amalgamated organizing cotton garment workers in Pennsylvania, New England, and the Prairie States. Organizing laundry workers, cleaners and dyers, retail clerks. Providing the manpower and the money to organize a textile workers union. Now if you want higher wages, let me tell you what to do. You got to talk to the workers in the shop with you. You got to build you a union, got to make it strong. But if you all stick together, boys, it won't be long. You get shorter hours. Better working conditions. Vacations with pay, take a kid to the seashore. It ain't quite this simple, so I better explain just why you got to ride on the union train. Cause if you wait for the boss to raise your pay, we'll all be awaiting till judgment day, we'll all be buried. Gone to heaven. St. Peter will be the straw boss then. Now you know you're underpaid, but the boss says you ain't. He speeds up the work till you're about to faint. You may be down and out, but you ain't beaten. You can pass out a leaflet and call a meeting. and talk it over. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? My daddy was a miner and I'm a miner's son. And I'll stick with the union till this old fight is won. Which side are you on? 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 We have been down here for five days. What do you say, boys? This land is your land, this land is my land From California to the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream water This land was made for you and me As I went walking that ribbon of highway I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream 
Memorial Day, 1937. arrested, 60 sent to the hospital, 30 bleeding from gunshot wounds, including one woman and three children, 10 dead, shot in the back. Flint, Michigan, 1937. When they tie a can to a union man... Sit down, sit down. When they give him the sack, they'll take him back. Sit down, sit down. Sit down and take a seat. Sit down and rest your feet. Sit down, you gotta be. We sat down in the auto plants for 44 days, and we came out with a union contract. In the men's clothing field, victory. Industry-wide collective bargaining bringing order out of chaos. Auto organized, CIO, steel organized, textile organized, rubber, oil, copper, merchant marine, furniture workers, glass workers, leather workers, packing house workers, and woodworkers. In three years, five million Americans organized, CIO. This line was made for you and me. 1938. Forget your troubles and just get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. We're heading across the river. In the tide, it's all so peaceful on the other side. Forget your troubles and just get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Berlin. Chancellor Adolf Hitler told reporters today that aside from rightful claims to Austria and Czechoslovakia, Germany has no territorial ambitions. He claimed that all accusations to the contrary are fabrications circulated by an international Jewish conspiracy. Poland, 7th, 1941. Pearl Harbor, a present from Tokyo.
in the African hills on the bleak islands of the Pacific, we got the message that the days when the United States could sit isolated behind its oceans were ended forever. The message written in fire that from now on, for better or for worse, it was one world. The battle line ran from the Philippines to Iwo Jima, from Anzio to Normandy. From El Alamein to Stalingrad. The battle line ran through Pittsburgh and Detroit and Norfolk and San Francisco. And yet, in the midst of war, in the 1942 elections, only a third of America's 80 million eligible voters went to the polls. Franklin Roosevelt, the White House, Washington. To Sidney Hillman. Dear Sidney, I can think of nothing more important in the years to come than the continuing political education of the people who do the jobs of this land. It is our duty now to begin to lay the plans and determine the strategy for winning a lasting peace and the establishment of an American standard of living higher than ever known before. The man dies, but the dream endures. We have accepted, so to speak, a second Bill of Rights under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all, regardless of station or race or creed. The right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing and recreation. The right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age and sickness and accident and unemployment. Finally, the right to a good education. All of these rights spell security. The clock ticks away the inexorable hours. Over the horizon, the days vanish like wild birds. The sky announces a new season. Pinned upon the drawing board are plans for the destruction of pianos and violets. Lightning flashes among the constellations, and yet the human spark burns on. Thunder rolls above the clouds, and yet the small persistent voice of man prevails. At the age of 83, I look back to see the changes that have taken place. I remembered that when Mr. Hellman had just arrived from Chicago, I then said to a friend of mine, and I says, he looks like a young fella, but I would take my hat off to him if he can take these wolves and make them see the light and, and create a business where individuals could make a livelihood and do away with that slavery that existed all through the years. You know, I can go back to a time with my pop, may rest in peace, you know, we worked together and he broke me in. I used to remember when he broke me in, we used to work next to each other and he was a strict man. And when he was out a day, just one day, there was no pay. And when he had no pay, there was no food in the house. Because we always ate from the buttonholes from the clothing line. At that time, a boss was able to walk over the machine, tear off the cotton and kick you out, and that was it. And when things got slow, the boss used to go around and cut prices, and we used to work cheaper. You had no standard of, of uh, conditions, you had no standard of garments, you had no standard of labor. It was a dog-eat-dog. -dog. And benefits, we had none. Today, as long as I stay in the Amalgamated, I've got my benefits. I can move to any union shop in the country, New York, Ohio, or Oskaloosa. Keep my medical care, keep my pension. Whoever thought that this trade would have three weeks vacation? Whoever thought we'd have legal holidays? Whoever thought we'd see a business agent can walk into a shop and tell a boss, you can't fire this man because he's old or because he's sick. You've got to keep him. Those things you didn't see years ago. 
And whoever thought in this trade when a man reached 65, he could retire, because never did we think that we see it in this trade. A man used to work until he dropped by the machine, and after he dropped, he had to hope his family would support him. I can remember when a man got sick, he was broke. Today, we've got the uh, union uh, hospitalization on x-ray, psychiatric, right down the line. You know, today I come into a shop and I look around and I see the younger people, uh, girls and boys, and I say to myself, do these people know what we fought for? Do they know how hard it was to get the conditions we've got? Do they know what a union actually means? Do they know what they have to go through to keep the conditions they have? Do they know that they must sacrifice to keep the conditions? They call each other brothers and sisters at a union meeting. Do they know that a union brother and a union sister means sacrifice? If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening. The biggest thing we have to sell the workers in the South on through our union is dignity. But the thing that's most important to them down there is dignity. The right to stand up and grieve. Uh, the right to know that they can take a stand when they're mistreated and shot. If you go into a town that's anti-union, we try to make contact as quietly as possible. Many times we refuse lodging accommodations in motels and hotels. We do get into a place sometimes, many of our phone calls are monitored. I myself have been in front of a plant in a southern community, had city officials, police and sheriff groups chase us away from the plant, taken out of a car, rope around my neck, pulled up on my tiptoes and told, if you ever come back here again, we'll kill you. Many times a worker will say, I'm for you, I'm going to vote for you, I'll sign a union card, but uh, uh, don't park your car close to our house because the boss will know we've been to see you and I may get fired tomorrow. It takes a lot of courage for a worker to sign a union card, but the workers have got courage, a lot of them have. If I had a First thing here, he's not ready for it. How can I give him something he's not ready for? But I am ready, I have been ready. But maybe you don't recognize it, maybe you think I'm still a child or something. I'm not a child, I'm grown. I have children. And I'm worrying about them like you're worrying about yours. You got to work for it, fight for it, day and night for it. And every generation got to win it again. Sometimes I get thinking, if only I could protect her from all the troubles in this world. Discrimination, poverty, war. But the best I can do is let her learn to be strong, to stand up and fight for a decent life. That's her inheritance. The seed is planted and the seed flowers. The roots take hold. The stubborn tree forces its way through the rock. Immigrants and the sons of immigrants handing down their inheritance creating out of their dreams and their anguish and their songs the face of America. Freedom doesn't come like a bird on the wing Doesn't come down like the summer rain Freedom, freedom is a hard-won thing You've got to work for it, fight for it Day and night for it And every generation got to win it again
this is the end. Take it from me, this is only the beginning. <laughs>